Welcome everybody and thank you for uh, having me and I just want to start off by saying thank you to the McKernans and Cordigin and to Doug Kennedy for putting this together. Um, we're starting off with a video that uh, when uh, Doug uh, Kennedy approached me about uh, speaking, he wanted to do a little vignette on one of my uh, patients who's had success with cannabis. So um, I haven't seen the video yet, so um, let's all watch it together and I can tell you more about the patient afterwards. Rhonda Moeller, uh, my daughter is Malia, she is seven, and she was diagnosed with autism at two years, nine months. She wasn't making eye contact, she wasn't responding to her name, um, she just was lost in her own world. She was very active, so she would um, constantly be running up and down. She couldn't really sit down for very long. She couldn't really stay focused on anything. We didn't want to try pharmaceuticals, um, but we were open to trying anything that was alternative that might um, not be so drastic, but maybe had some changes in her behavior. And we tried restricting her diet from gluten. We tried restricting, you know, casein. You know, some things helped here and there, but it was nothing that helped with the overall picture of her behavior. There was a discussion between some parents and I saw Dr. Bonnie Goldstein's name. So we made the appointment and went to go see her and she was awesome. She explained the whole thing to me. Upon her recommendation, we tried a CBD oil, cannabidiol. She told me, well, let's try and add in the THC. The THC is the psychoactive component of cannabis. We found a ratio of THC to CBD that was, it was just life changing for my daughter. She began to sit down and focus. Her aggression that she was experiencing before the cannabis, that was gone. And then I started hearing feedback from therapists and teachers asking me, okay, what's going on with your daughter? Like, what's changed? She's no longer aggressive. She's no longer hitting students. She's no longer spitting at people. She's no longer yelling at staff. She's sitting down, she's doing her work, and she, I was so excited that it was working, and I didn't care anymore. I didn't care, so I just started telling people that this is what we were doing. Um, so that was a family uh, that came to me fairly desperate. Um, many of the people that come into my office are at that uh, desperate moment. For this family, um, she said they didn't go anywhere with their child. They couldn't go to the grocery store. They couldn't go to Chuck E. Cheese. Um, going to school in the morning was, uh, you know, she woke up, the mom woke up with dread just getting their daughter out of the house. Um, and so you have to remember that it's not just the patient that is struggling, but the whole family. And What's amazing is I just saw this family a few weeks ago, and this little girl graduated from ABA therapy because there's no more therapy to correct, or no more behaviors to correct. Uh, she's starting to speak, and although they still have their challenges, their life has changed uh, significantly. This mom now has become a huge advocate and has started a Facebook page for parents seeking help with uh, children uh, with autism. They've been collecting data and they have data from over 850 families using cannabis and they're looking at the different cannabis strains that are being used, the terpenoids, the ratios, trying to really dial in on what's working best for these children. And, um, you know, I applaud this family because they really um, uh, went past the fear. They tried it out and, it, like uh, the mom said, it's been life changing. Let me see here. So, um, so I'm medical director at Canna Centers, and there's not a lot of time, so let me uh, go through here. Um, I opened uh, my office in 2008. We have two locations in Southern California. We see somewhere between 250 and 300 patients a month between the two practices. Remember, I live in a large metropolitan uh, city with millions of people, but also we get people from all over the state and also some out-of-state patients as well. Uh, many of the, most of these patients are returning patients over the you know, uh, almost decade that we've been there. Uh, we see about 20 to 40 new patients a month. Our youngest patient was a six-week-old with a devastating genetic illness. 
uh, who started having seizures, probably in utero, first documented seizure within two hours of birth. And then our oldest patient, my oldest patient was a 100-year-old uh, woman who was probably on, oh, I don't know, like 15 or 17 different medications, and the family came to me and said, is there any possible way we could get her off some of these drugs? And we did do that successfully. Um, the average age of adult patients is not 21, it's 58. Uh, we are seeing a lot of baby boomers coming in who are saying, I do not want to be on these medications anymore. And I will tell you, about 75% of patients come in are already on multiple medications, and they are looking to get off those medications because of either side effects or that the drugs are ineffective, or the philosophically they just really don't want to take that many medications. They're fine to take their blood pressure medication or, or their heart medication, but to take uh, sleeping pills on top of pain pills on top of other kinds of um, uh, quality of life medication, that's one of the biggest things that we see in the practice. And then definitely we're seeing a changing demographic in California. I know some of my colleagues and I have talked about this. We're initially when I started in this practice, it was mostly people who were already using cannabis and just wanted to be legal. They no longer wanted to be part of a illicit drug market. And now what we're seeing is people who are what we call cannabis naive. They've not used cannabis, but they're seeing it as a possibility. And I'll ha I'm very happy to say that in the last two years, I've gotten more referrals from mainstream physicians like rheumatologists, oncologists, and neurologists um, than ever before. And so I really think that cannabis is now becoming accepted and it's no longer fringe. Um, here's a list of adult conditions. I'm not going to go through all of them, but if you uh, think about what Dr. Mishulam talked about this morning about the distribution of receptors, it corresponds with the diseases that we're seeing in a, a medical cannabis practice. And so uh, by far my adult patients are chronic pain. I would say the top three are pain, anxiety, insomnia, which all run together. And then, of course, we're seeing a lot of patients with uh, autoimmune disease as well as cancer. Uh, in pediatrics, it's a, it's a little shorter list. Uh, by far, treatment-resistant epilepsy and autism are the two most common conditions, although I am seeing a fair amount of patients being referred for uh, advanced cancers. But I will also tell you that a couple of the local children's hospitals are now referring patients for symptomatic relief of nausea, vomiting, weight loss, and pain uh, because we can really do some nice things with very low dose CBD, THCA, and THC in these children who are really struggling, uh, who are nonverbal for the most part, and they're not able to, to tell their parents they feel lousy from the chemo or from the radiation. And so we are seeing a lot of those uh, kids being referred in. Um, and again, part of it is the parents asking as well when they're at the doctor's office, are you okay if we're doing this? And I'm definitely seeing an openness uh, that we did not see before. Um, I'm also seeing a fair amount of patients with pandas and pans, and I'm again, because of time, I can't go into that, but uh, this is a pediatric um, autoimmune disease that can be very, quite devastating, attacks uh, normal, healthy children, and is, is really devastating to the family. Um, and we are seeing some really nice response. Most of these kids, uh, I have a couple of families where the children were actually institutionalized and we've been able to get them out uh, and, and back functioning in society. Now the goals of treatment, uh, pretty common. Everything that we think that cannabis does medically. So pain relief, alleviating anxiety, depression, Im improving sleep, helping appetite. Uh, lessening nausea, vomiting, gut symptoms. Now, a lot of people don't think about enhanced focus and concentration, but if you have an endocannabinoid deficiency and you're suffering with uh, ADD, but also autism and other conditions where you can't focus, and remember the baseline status of the endocannabinoid system is going to dictate how you respond. For many of these people, they say, I'm able to do well. I'm able to go to work. I'm able to study at school. Parents are reporting to me also that their children are doing much better in school. Um, and of course, reducing and eliminating seizures when we see patients who have intractable seizure disorder. But there's also other, other goals of treatment and kind of behind the scenes, apart from just feeling better at the moment that you take cannabis, we're also seeing some long-term effects, mostly anti-inflammatory and neuroprotection, um, anti-tumor. Um, and many patients just report, and we even have a space on my intake form, how does cannabis affect your quality of life? And people actually write, I have a, a, a sense of well-being. I just feel 
better. And sometimes it's hard to put it into words. Less pain is easy, but in general, having just a better quality of life and feeling better. This is coming from balancing your endocannabinoid system and achieving that. And I will say that um, there, cannabis is not the only thing that will balance your endocannabinoid system. And my colleague, Dustin Su uh, Sulak from Maine, uh, at his uh, table out there, he has a wonderful, um, I actually brought it up here, um, endocannabinoid diet and activities, other things that can enhance your endocannabinoid system. So I do encourage people to look at that because it's not just cannabis. Cannabis is a piece of the puzzle. But one of the main things is, you know, we can talk about uh, pain scales and these kinds of things, but one of the things that I see in my practice that I find really important is that when people come into my office who are desperate, they have lost control of their daily life. They are not participating with family, with work, in their social activities, exercise, and what happens is it starts to spiral out of control. And what I'm finding with cannabis is that even though the medical condition is not being cured, What's happening is that shift of power, that control, is going back to the patient. They're able to manage their condition with less side effects. They're not worried about the medication long term that they're putting into their body. And it's simple. They take a little bit, and it works. And if they feel well, they can skip it without worrying about feeling a withdrawal the next day or even for a week. Um, and so that, that power play between uh, the medical condition being in control versus you having control of your life, I think, is one of the most uh, very important essential things that I see in this particular kind of uh, specialty. And I improvement of quality of life, and a lot of people come in and say, I'm not better, I still have cancer, I still have anxiety, but I'm in control. I am no longer being led around by my medical condition. So it's very important that we, that we acknowledge that. Now here's a patient report. I had a 36-year-old female came into my office in 2013, 10-year history of fibromyalgia, insomnia, and anxiety, and, and as you can imagine, she was having frequent bouts of depression. You can see her list of multiple medications. She came in with a big baggie, and she said, I'm on all this, and it's not working. I feel terrible. And she was extremely nervous because the type of work she does, she did not want to be outed as a cannabis user. And within a week of seeing her, I got this email. Uh, where she sums it up. I came in to see you last week and went straight to the dispensary. That means she was pretty desperate. Um, I've been trying all sorts of different cannabis for my insomnia and pain. I'm very excited to report that my pain levels have gone down so much that I feel like a normal person again. I don't even have to do it every day. It lasts for two to three days. And that is something that I see, is that patients don't have to medicate all the time. I will tell you, 80% of my patients are nighttime users of cannabis and probably... Um, at least 50% do not medicate every day. Um, and then she wrote, my, my whole life has changed, thank you. And I just saw her probably maybe three months ago and she's continued to do well. And in fact, when she comes in, she's like, I'm fine. I want to talk about my brother who needs to come see you. So, so it's almost as, and she, I, she still has her conditions. It's, it's just that they're well managed and they're easily managed with cannabis. And then here's a more recent patient who just came to see me last year, a 44-year-old female with severe migraines. Uh, she did not respond to many pharmaceuticals. And what's interesting is she worked for one of the large um, entertainment uh, movie companies out in California, and she was kind of a bigwig there, but um, her migraines were so debilitating that she had to take a leave of absence, and that was devastating to her. She was uh, trying so hard not to miss work, and she w had told me she was missing at least two to three days a week, and they told her, you know, you can't, we have to, you know, we're not getting the work done. We have to uh, ask you to take time off. And so um, she was super stressed when she came to see me, not only from the um, pain and th the years of this, but also from the financial hit she was taking by not working. And so here's the email from her. It's been almost eight weeks since I saw you. I just want to give you an update. The CBD oil has been a miracle in controlling my chronic migraines. I've only had three very mild migraines since starting the oil. This is a huge improvement to the 10 plus migraines I was getting monthly. I've titrated up to about 80 milligrams daily, and that's important because you notice it's two months in, we start low dose and we titrate up, and this is where she found a good spot. Um, and she adds a couple of drops of THC when I feel the migraines coming on. I definitely feel more relaxed overall and finally have quality restful sleep. And uh, I was happy to, I'm very happy to say that she went back to work after four months of starting cannabis oil. Um, now in children, um, 
I've listed here quotes from emails and text messages from families. I won't go through all of them, but as you can see, they're all uh, pretty impressive. Um, the big things are that what I am seeing in pediatrics, and you know, I, I talked last year, we don't know about long-term effects, but we know what long-term effects of, of intractable seizures do. We know what long-term effects of a child who is uh, autistic at a young age and unable to participate in therapy, and then becomes a teenager and gets large size and, and, and difficult to control. And so what I'm seeing is that when someone is a responder, what we're seeing is, is a child moving forward in life. And I write in my book about a little girl who came to me at nine years of age who was not reading and writing. And I, I write in the book that she came to me and read me a book and wrote her name in cursive. And that was a huge accomplishment. So I am seeing, I, I do not see children regressing with cannabis. I see children's brains progressing to reach their full potential, whatever that may be for that particular child. And here's a patient report. Uh, this is Thomas, and the, uh, Thomas's mom has given me uh, permission to talk about him. This is a, a young boy who was born with a congenital brain malformation, and he was having intractable seizures. He, um, uh, one of the main things that they came in for was the seizures, but the second thing was the severe self-injurious behavior. And so he had came in wearing arm braces so that he couldn't bend his arms so his hands couldn't be by his face because I saw pictures that the mom showed me of black eyes and uh, hematomas on his ears that they had to take him to the emergency room to get drained. I mean, he was uh, really beating himself up. Um, he also had severe acid reflux to the point where the family walked around with little cups to catch his vomit all day long. The mom said they went through thousands and thousands of cups every year, and he was also unable to walk. He had tried 10 different um, uh, seizure medications. We started him on cannabis oil at age uh, seven years. This was February uh, 2015. And again, we start low dose and we titrate up. It takes time. He was also on seizure medications that were being weaned off. Uh, but he had complete resolution of vomiting. This was just a perk. The mom was thrilled with that, but he had 90% reduction of seizures and continues to have that. And then, um, it, can you play this uh, video for me? This is uh, Thomas who, oh, yep. Or maybe I can do it. Oh, here it is, I got it. And this is Thomas, he learned to walk um, unassisted. If I can get it to go, oops, sorry, there we go. And the mom sent me this video because uh, she was just so shocked and surprised. Thomas, over here. Come here. Come here. Thomas, come here. Come on. Keep going. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Come over here. Good job, T. Come on. Come on. Keep going. Come on, look. You want to see Fran? Come on. There's Mario. Come on. Keep going. Uh oh, you want to go to the bathroom? And so apparently he discovered the mirror and liked to go look at himself, so... And this was a kid that uh, really everybody had written off. And so one of the things that the mom said in the last visit was, not only is it keep getting better, she says, I have no idea what, it, what the next year is gonna bring. It just keeps getting better and better. And I think part of it is where we wanna see, you know, more and more balance and allow him to reach his potential because I just don't think that we know. And, you know, I thought about what Dr. Mishulam said in his video and he said some of these kids are being saved. And I, we really don't know uh, what the future holds because this is a whole new brand, brand new generation of children that are getting uh, intervention with cannabis. Now, I don't have a lot of time to go over this, but in California, uh, we have lots of different oils. There's no restrictions. Uh, some people say that's bad. I say it's good. My patients can get medicine. And so I uh, have divvied up the cannabis medicine into four different groups um, just based on the main cannabinoids, the dominant cannabinoids, so THC rich 
in the top left. Bottom left is the high ratio CBD to THC. Bottom right is the low ratio CBD to THC, and the top right is the raw cannabinoids because basically p patients need a roadmap. What am I, what's in this product? And I've, people come in who say, oh, I've tried just about everything and I came to you because I have a card but nothing's working and really all they've tried is just one of these categories because they don't know how to read labels and they're not sure what they're getting. And so when you break it up like this, it gives a patient a roadmap of different things to try. I've got 20 seconds, so I'm going to go real quick here. Um, these are various products. You can see they're all labeled. And in California, we went from not very many labeled things about eight years ago um, to now we're seeing uh, labeled. And also January 2018, everything's going to be tested that's on the market. So we've really made some progress in that regard. Um, these are, I was just going to mention the terpenoids, very important, especially in pediatric patients. Uh, it appears linalool and myrcene, both very calming, are uh, excellent for children with uh, uh, epilepsy and uh, autism. And then people often ask me which cannabinoid. I don't know. I can make an educated guess, but your body's going to respond. And so uh, for most patients, uh, you have to have a wide variety of choices so that a person can find what works best for them. And then this is why we should have cannabis right here. It sums it up. Thank you very much.